Hi, this is Kate and in this video you'll learn how to edit your photos in the Visco app using both presets and the manual uh, image adjustment tools. So the first thing you need to do in once you open Visco is to access your photo library. Um, if you can't see the library screen that I've got here, um, you can just tap the menu button at the bottom or you can swipe right across your screen to access the main menu and then simply tap library. Um, so this shows you any photos that you've already opened um, within the Visco app, but if you want to import more images for editing, just tap the plus icon at the top, and then you can select any pictures that you want to bring into the app to edit. Tap the check mark when you've selected, and they will be imported into your library. So once you're ready to edit um, a picture, you just tap on it so that the border appears around it and then at the bottom of the screen tap the second icon along which takes you to your edit options. So the first thing that comes up is the um, list of presets along the bottom of the screen and this is what Visco is famous for. Um, the sort of film-like quite subtle preset filters that you can apply with a single tap of the um, preset. So simply tap a preset that you want to use and it applies to the photo. Tap another one and it changes to that preset. So if I switch along I think I am going to go for F2 uh, which sort of cools down the um, colours um, in the trees and uh, makes it look a bit of a cooler um, picture to emphasise the snowy scene. Um, now sometimes the presets can be a bit strong so if you want to reduce the effect, so just tap the preset at the bottom that you've just applied and you'll get a slider where you can reduce the amount of preset that's applied. Uh, so I am going to go for about nine, I think, on this one. When you're happy with that, tap the check mark and we're done. Uh, so if I'm ready to save, I tap the bar at the bottom and then tap the check mark on the right and then to save this to my camera roll um, so that it appears in the native iOS photos app tap the circle on the right at the bottom and save to camera roll and then I'm going to save it at actual size because I don't want to reduce the size of the photo and that is now saved to my camera roll uh, so that's the, a simple preset, but often you'll want to um, make manual adjustments to your uh, photos. Uh, sometimes you'll want to use a combination of manual adjustments and presets. So I'm going to use this picture of a snowy scene and tap the edit button at the bottom. And then to access the adjustment tools, tap the bar at the bottom, tap the second icon along to go to your adjustments. And now we'll go through what every single one of these um, icons is for. Uh, the icons don't have names, so the only way you know what it does, if you're not sure, is to tap on an icon and then the name of that adjustment appears at the bottom of the screen. So the first one we'll um, go for is the exposure um, icon, which is the sun. And here, if you swipe left across the slider, it makes the image darker and right will make the image brighter. Uh, so I think this image is a little bit dark. I want to brighten it up just a touch so that the snow appears a bit whiter. Um, if I go too much, I'm going to lose detail in the snow and the shadows are going to be too bright. So I might just go for plus one at the moment. You can always come back into these settings and adjust them afterwards. Um, so I'm going to tap the check mark for that. The next icon along is the contrast option. And if I swipe to the left, it reduces contrast, it sort of fades all the tones. And if I increase the contrast, it makes the bright bits brighter and the dark bits darker. Um, so I'm going to maybe do two, plus two for that one. Tap the check mark when you're done. So the next icon is the straighten tool. Um, so this is great if you've got um, a landscape photo and the horizon isn't level. You just slide the green bar left or right to adjust the um, rotation. So um, I haven't got a horizon really that I can 
gauge this, but I think that's probably about right. Tap the check mark. Um, the next icon is the horizontal perspective tool. Uh, now if I slide left and right, you can see what happens. It adjusts the horizontal perspective of the photo. I don't think I need to use that, so I'm just going to tap the X to come out of that without making any changes. Uh, the next icon along is the vertical perspective tool. Um, and if I slide right and left, you can see how the top or bottom of the photo um, is adjusted. Now, with this one, I'm actually going to swipe right to straighten up my trees. So this is good for tall subjects like buildings or trees that um, converge towards the top of the photo because you have to tilt your iPhone um, at an angle to take the photo. Um, so I think that'll do. And tap the check mark when you're done. Okay, so the next option is the crop tool. Um, you can crop to different aspect ratios or <coughs> um, square here. Um, I'm not actually going to crop this photo, so I'm going to tap the X. Uh, so if I swipe, uh, swipe along, we've got some triangle icons. The first one is clarity. So if I increase the clarity, you can see a bit more detail coming out in the um, photo. It's kind of altering the contrast, really, uh, making the dark bits um, darker so that they appear um, more um, prominent against the, the lighter areas. Uh, so I'm just going to, a little bit of clarity, maybe plus three. So tap the check mark. And the next icon, the triangle one, is the sharpen um, option. So this just sharpens up detail in a slightly different way to clarity. Um, so if you go too far with um, sharpening, your picture can look over sharpened and can end up a little bit uh, sort of grainy. So be careful not to over sharpen, but sometimes it's worth <clears throat> just sharpening maybe three or four to give your detail a bit more definition. Tap the check mark when you're done. Uh, so the next option, which is this uh, rectangle, that's the uh, saturation. So this is, alters the uh, vibrancy of the colours. So if I reduce the saturation, it virtually makes it black and white. And if I increase the saturation, it makes the colours very vivid. Now there's not much colour in this picture, but there is a slightly blue colour cast, and that's why the um, blue is becoming more prominent when I increase the saturation. Um, so I don't think I actually want to increase the saturation on this picture, so I'm going to tap the um, X. So the next icon along this circle, um, this is Highlight Save, and um, if I increase right across to 12, you can see my highlights get darker. So the aim of this is to bring back detail um, in overly bright areas. Um, so sometimes it can rescue a slightly overexposed photo, but it's fairly subtle, so um, you can't rescue an area that's, say, pure white if it's, if it's overexposed. Um, I don't actually want to make my whites any darker um, in this photo, so I'm going to cancel that. Next option is the shadows save. So this does the opposite. It brings out detail in the shadows or darker areas of the photo. So if you watch the darker areas, such as the trees, they're becoming brighter. Um, okay, it's obviously too much. Uh, if I take it back to zero, I might just go to plus one with this, just to make the trees a little, little bit lighter. Tap the check mark. So the next icon along is the temperature. And this is uh, used to either make your photo warmer, so basically more yellow or orange, or cooler, so more blue. So if I go back to zero, um, now I can either choose to make this photo a little bit blue to sort of emphasize the coolness of the snow, or I might go a little bit to the right just to warm up the um, picture just a little bit. Um, so I think I'm going to go for just a s minus one, just to make it a little bit more cool and to emphasise the, the cold weather. Tap the check mark. 
the next option along is the tint. Um, now this alter also alters the colour, but it either adds more green if you go to the left, or more purple if you go to the right. I don't think I want to add either of those to my photo, so take it back to zero, or tap the um, X. Uh, the next icon, which is a head, um, this is the um, skin tone option. So if you've taken a portrait photo, um, you might want to... Um, alter the skin tones just uh, to warm them up a little bit. Um, so we don't need to do that for this photo, so I'll cancel that. Next icon is the um, vignette button. And if I go right across to the right, you can see the edges of my photo becoming darker. And that's a, a vignette. Um, again, I don't want to do that with that photo, so cancel that. Uh, the next one is the grain. Uh, so this adds grain into your photo, so um, I don't really want to do that. I want this photo nice and sharp, but you might want to add grain maybe if you're trying to create like an old vintage feel in your photo. Um, the next one along is fade, so this obviously fades your picture. Again, this can be useful for creating a sort of old um, feel in the picture. Um, I may just... Do a plus one there. And the final two um, icons are um, shadows tint. So this tints the shadows, so the darker areas, with a particular colour. So for example, if I tap the purple option, um, it tints all the darker areas, such as the trees, with a purple colour. If I tap the blue, it tints them with blue. Um, what I could do here is select the orange, and then that's too much, but if I tap the um, circle icon again, it brings up a slider, and now I could just very slightly, maybe plus two, um, add a little bit of orangey brown into the trees, just to give them a little bit of colour in what's otherwise really a monochrome image. Um, so tap the check marks and then the last one is the highlight tint. So this does the opposite, it tints the highlights or the um, brighter areas of your photo uh, with a colour. So say if I tap the cream colour, um, it makes all the white areas or the light areas um, cream, green, purple, etc. Uh, now I don't think I want to do any of that in this picture so I'm going to cancel that. Okay. So um, here is my uh, final photo. Now you can see what it looked like um, before um, by tapping and holding on the screen. So there's the before version and there's the after. Okay. So if I now wanted to make any adjustments maybe to something that I'd done earlier on, so for example the um, exposure, you can now go back into there, it's remembered what you set before and you can easily just adjust it um, to anywhere you want. So I'll just put that back to uh, plus one, tap the check mark and we're done. So um, I'm finished with the adjustments now, so I'm going to tap the bottom bar and um, you can either um, finish where you're up to now by tapping the check mark or if you wanted to see whether you could further enhance the image with a um, preset, you can tap the preset button which is the left button and here you've got your presets where you can then make any further adjustments using these. Okay, uh, now I'm not going to apply a preset here, so I'm just going to tap the far left icon, which puts it back to the um, original edited version, and then tap the bottom bar, tap the check mark, and we're done. So we just need to save this to the camera roll, so tap the circle on the right, and save to camera roll, and select actual size. Okay, and the photo is now saved to the camera roll. 
so hopefully you should now have a good understanding of how to edit your photos in Visco. Um, the best way to learn what each tool does is just to open it up, use the sliders and see how it affects your photo. Every photo is different, every photo needs different adjustments um, and just playing around with them will just um, give you the confidence really to try out these different settings and see how they affect your photo.